The first thing I want to say before starting to talk about internet safety, cyberbullying, and digital citizenship is that I am not here to be the internet police. I'm not here to say no, 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 without a reason behind it. So you'll notice over here on the side, I put a picture of my puppy and he looks sweet and adorable and harmless. But if you have a piece of cheese in your hand, he's going to snap at your fingers. So the internet is kind of the same way. It looks sweet and innocent and some of it is, but not all of it is since you don't always know what's going on in the background. Think of the internet like Halloween candy. Some you may like, some you won't, some is bad, and too much may make you feel sick. I'm sure your parents have told you, don't talk to strangers. The same rules apply when you're online. So think of the internet the same way you think of life around you. Would you share information with a total stranger in a store? Would you climb on playground equipment at the park and shout your name and your age? Then why would you share it online where billions of people could see it? If I walked up to you in a store and I said, hi, I'm in third grade and I go to your school, or I'm a sixth grader at your school, you can see in person that I'm obviously not a sixth grader. But online, you can't always see the person. And even if the person has a picture, I could have grabbed that picture from anywhere on the internet. And now we're even seeing pictures that can be made to talk like videos. So someone may not be exactly who they say they are. Think before answering questions online. Those online quizzes can be fun, but many of those questions are questions that also come up when you need to reset your password or secure your password, or if you're applying for a credit card when you're older. If you've posted those answers online, someone could hack into your account. For example, what is the name of your pet? What's your favorite movie? What's your favorite restaurant? What is your email? When you see questions posted online, if they make you stop and think, go get a grown up and ask for support. One suggestion is don't put your real answers. What's the name of your pet? Pick a favorite cartoon character something that doesn't match exactly what the question is. For password reset questions, the company is just looking that you know the answers to those questions, not that they're the true responses. Don't give out personal information. Personal information can mean your name, your address, your phone number, your school, your age, passwords, or your email address. If someone is asking any of these questions online, you need to ask yourself why they need these answers. Now it could be it's a login for a website and that's fine, but if it's something else or someone is asking you these questions, you need to pause and figure out what's going on and why they're asking it or why they need those answers. You especially need to protect your passwords. Maybe you want to share it with a friend because they're your good friend and you trust them. But sometimes people who are friends right now may not be friends in a few weeks or next year, and now you've given them your password to get into your account. Another thing that's important is to not open or download things you aren't sure about. For example, you may get an email that might say, check out this picture. Before you click on that link, double check with the person sending the image and ask them if they sent you a picture. Watch out for spelling errors, proofreading errors, simple things that suggest that it might not be who it's supposed to be. For example, I once received a link from my uncle and it said, is this you in this video? And I had just made a video for Microsoft that was posted to YouTube. So I thought maybe that was the video he was looking at. And then I realized the message actually said, OMG, is this you? Well, my uncle is almost 80 years old, so I don't think he uses the term OMG. I contacted my aunt and I found out, yes, his account had been hacked. So if I had clicked that link, I might have put a virus or malware on my computer. When an account is hacked, the hacker can get access to email addresses. So it may appear that the message came from your friend. So you kind of need to be suspicious when you're getting random links that don't sound like your friend. This should be a given. 
don't send mean messages. First of all, when you send a mean message, there's proof of it on your device. But also think about if it's something you would say in person. You don't always have to agree with someone, but it shouldn't take much effort to be nice. I also want to tell you to be careful when you're sending messages to think about how the person may hear it. If I sent you a text me message that said, nice shirt, do I mean nice shirt like I really like the shirt you're wearing today? Or nice shirt, what were you thinking wearing that? That's why people use emojis, emoticons, smiley faces, all those fun little things to help someone understand what their intent was in the message. It's kind of like if you send a message in all caps, it sounds like you're yelling at the person. So try to use that when you're excited and not when you're mad. Also, don't post or share pictures that might embarrass you or your friends or make someone upset. You may think that picture is funny of you and your friends doing something wacky, but one of your friends may not feel the same way and it might hurt their feelings or be dangerous. A lot of pictures that kids post end up on websites they really shouldn't be on. So think before you share that picture, if that's a picture you want the world seeing. One tip I give my students is imagine your grandmother or your parents are standing near you. Would you still share that picture? Would you share it with them? Here's a good flow chart to consider. First off, is it a good photo? If not, stop there. Don't share it. Only show your best work. Would your friend agree? If your friend wouldn't agree, why risk losing a friend over it? Do you want them to post a bad photo of you? Could it get your friend in trouble? Imagine you just got a new video game. And your friend comes over because you've told your parents you want to study for a test and you've studied for five whole minutes, but that newly wrapped video game is just begging to be open and played and your friend gets a high score. So you post a picture of it. Could that get your friend in trouble? Could it also get you in trouble? Is it going to cause drama? When I was younger, my family didn't have a lot of money. So we only had a birthday party every other year. On the years when we didn't have a party, we got to take one friend to dinner. Well, that meant I could only take one and not my other friends. If I had posted pictures of that, do you think my other friends might have been hurt? There's enough drama. If a picture is going to cause drama, don't share it. Your friend may be okay with it, but what about you? Is it okay for anyone in the world to see? Remember, it's easy for someone to share online. My niece, who is an adult, uses Snapchat, and she told me it's okay because the picture disappears. Well, what if I take a screenshot, or what if I took a picture with another device of that image? I could share it wherever I wanted. And also, this is a good time to think about those terms and conditions. Read the terms and conditions for those free apps. They may have the right to share your pictures as well. Would it be okay for my grandma, my mom, my teacher to see? Imagine family members seeing it. Would they be embarrassed? Would they show others? Will I feel good about sharing it years from now? If you have to think about it, don't do it. If all of these answers are yes, then go for it. Share the picture. Let's look at some pictures to consider what you might want to share or might not want to share. How about this one? Have you ever woken up in the morning and your hair is crazy like a gremlin plate in your head that night and it's sticking out everywhere? You may think it's hysterical and you want to share that out. But a few years from now, maybe you and your friend that you shared it with both like the same person, they might share that bedhead picture. And maybe that's not the picture you're worried about, but check out this one. What about this picture? the epic snot bubble. You may have a cold and you sneeze and this bubble comes out your nose. So you take a picture of it. You do a selfie that you want to share with your friends. And that's great. But in a few years, do you want other people seeing that epic snot bubble picture? Do you want that on your social media page for a future boss to see a future boyfriend, girlfriend? Think about those pictures that you share. 
The one thing I want you to notice about this picture is, first of all, I found it online and it was Creative Commons, which means I had the rights to use this picture. But this picture is of a child and I cropped it a little bit, but most likely someone else took this picture and shared it. So you may need to have a conversation with the adults in your life about the pictures they take and share online. When you're online, it's important to encourage others. Report things to an adult. If something doesn't look right, if it makes you pause, go get an adult and have them take a look at it. But also pause before you post. Think of it this way. Pause. Is it positive? Accurate? Understandable. Could someone understand what you're posting? Is it spam? Are you just clicking a link and forwarding it on? Is it enlightening? Does it help someone learn something? Is it educational? Is it positive? Consider if it will make a difference. Is what you're about to post something that will make things better or make things worse? An example of this is if someone hurts your feelings, you may sit down and start writing them a message or an email back. Think about if it will make a difference if you send that message. Is it going to change the way they acted? If it's a close friend, maybe. If it's someone you just know as an acquaintance, probably not, and it might make things worse. If it makes you feel better, write the message, write it down, type the email up, but then delete it. Get those emotions out, and then you can move on. Keep negative comments to yourself. You may have misunderstood something. You might not have understood the way the person meant it. And if you go and start posting all these negative comments, it may blow up the issue into a bigger problem. Remember that others can screenshot your comments and share. So you may think you're only sharing it with one friend, but they have the ability now to forward it to others. So what you should do if there's a problem online is first of all, with electronic devices, you can turn off the screen, turn off the device. If you end up on a website that you didn't mean to use the back button. If something pops up, tell a trusted adult, and you can also report it to many websites or apps to let them know that someone is not behaving the way they should. Remember, once you post something online, you can't take it back, even if you delete it. Celebrities find this all the time. They post something on Twitter and they delete it later because they regretted it, but someone has taken a screenshot and has shared that widely. If you get a request to connect with someone online that you don't want to, or maybe there was someone you were connected with that you don't want to be connected with anymore because of how they're behaving online, you can block them. You can unfriend them. You can report the behavior. But one of the best things is also to talk to someone. Friends will always make you feel better if something happens online. Sadly, cyberbullying is the online version of the bullying that some people have to put up with at school. So let's talk about some ways that you can handle a bully. First of all, if someone's being mean to you, walk away. If they follow you, try to walk towards an adult because they're not as likely to continue giving you a hard time if you're standing near an adult. Online, you can leave the chat, block the person, or go tell an adult in your life. Some other tips to think about is that often a bully doesn't feel very good about themselves. So compliment them. It's very hard to keep saying mean things to someone when you're saying nice things in return. But the other thing is, if you're not the one being bullied, but you see it happening, step in, show support. Definitely don't join in, but step in to help it stop. Tell the bully to stop, report it to an adult, or if online, report it to the website. You can make a difference and you are the ones who can stop bullying and cyberbullying. Show adults that you can be responsible. When you show that you can be responsible, it makes your teachers and the adults around you happy. Happy teacher means happy class and happy class means happy teacher. Same with your parents. Show them that you can handle that extra responsibility. I hope this has given you some ideas of how you can keep yourself and your friends safer online and have a good time using the internet without putting anyone in danger or make anyone feeling bad about themselves. Thank you.